住您的亲友移民美国所要填写的表格和证明材料呢，非常的繁杂。对这些您了解多少呢？今天我们就为您请来了王明武律师事务所的移民律师 Cameron， 给我们一个解答。Cameron, welcome. Hi, thank you. What kind of some of the key things you need to watch out for when you're filling out I-130? First and foremost, when you fill an I-130 application out, you have to know that every word you put on that document is done under oath, mm -hmm. which means that becomes facts. That becomes your representation of the facts. Um, if you make small clerical errors, for example, I live in apartment 502 and I put 501, that can be corrected at the immigration interview or mm -hmm. through USCIS. Um, what you have to be aware of is that um, when you're reviewing your application and turning it in, you have to, everything that's material must be uh, made under oath, must be the truth, and you cannot change it later on. Mm -hmm. What about um, little things like, you, what if you, the space provided is not big enough to, if you have to write mm -hmm. a, a two pages while the, the form does, only gives you a one box to, to complete? Well, as an attorney, oftentimes what I do is I put a little thing that says, see attached you know, paper, and then I can write an applicant's uh, answer. And it's better than, well, I ran out of room on the typed form, so that's all I could write. You're always going to want to fully disclose to immigration, even if the form doesn't allow it. So oftentimes what I do is I attach separate forms that would explain things like criminal convictions, mm -hmm. uh, any kind of arrests, uh, any prior marriages, the circumstances behind it. So immigration has an idea of what's going to, what the true story is as opposed to, well, I didn't have room on the application, so I just put what I could. Right. Um, so I know a lot of the documents uh, from China, they're all, of course, in Chinese. They don't mm -hmm. necessarily have English translation. So do you need to have, hire somebody to translate for you? And if so, who can do this? For, in a foreign language must be translated and given to immigration. Oftentimes you, have to, you do have to hire somebody to translate those documents. Attorney's offices, for example, will have somebody who can, who's certified to translate, that's certified that can speak and write the language to do that work for you. But if you submit a bunch of documents in Chinese only, or in Spanish only, or in another language only, oftentimes immigration will reject those or require at a certain date that you get those documents translated and that could delay your case even longer. What if, can I just hire a friend to uh, translate for me? I strongly advise against that because um, also the translations need to be certified and under oath. So if a friend does it for you, you better trust that friend 100% that they're certified, that they're qualified in that specific language to do the translations. Oftentimes you can find translation services for mm. low cost that can uh, do those documents for you. And oftentimes, there's not a lot that needs to be translated. But for example, if it's a birth certificate in a certain language. I heard a lot of the documents like birth certificate, uh, affidavit, uh, all need to be notarized uh, by the National Notarization Center in China before they can be uh, used by the immigration. Is that true? <clears throat> That's true, that a birth certificate has to be notarized by usually the consulate oh. or the issuing agency that um, gave you the birth certificate. I have a client right now where it was notarized, everything was good, but there was no date in which the birth took place. So what happens if you do not provide these documents, you have to provide secondary evidence that there, a relationship exists. And once it goes down that road, it's a, a severe delay in your case and, and uh, immigration looks you know, doesn't it won't exactly deny you your your uh, your immigration benefits, but it's an extra hoop that you have to jump over to provide those documents. Mm. Great. Well, thank you. Thank you. Mm.